Welcome to class. I'm so happy to see you all. My name is Miss Brandt, and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Rising Star Elementary School. Go Firebirds! I'm so happy to be here with you today. I want you to know that all of your teachers and I, we really miss you, and we're so glad to see you and so proud of you for keeping on reading and working hard even when we're not in school together. So today, I'm so excited to share with you one of my favorite books. But before we get started, I want to let you know what you'll need today to do our assignment. We're going to be doing Making Meaning and working on visualizing all this week. So the first thing that you'll need is a turn and talk partner. Now, when we're in class together, you usually have a partner right next to you on the carpet. But for this lesson, we're going to get a little bit creative, so I need your help. An example of a turn and talk partner might be a family member who's at home with you, maybe a mom, a dad, grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle, cousin. If there's not a family member at home with you, don't worry. You can turn and talk to a pet, to an imaginary friend, to a stuffed animal, or you can even call me. That's right, take out your phone and give me a call. I'll be here to answer and hear what you have to say. Before we get started, let me introduce you to my turn and talk partners today. I'm so excited to share with you Tiggy the Tiger. Tiggy came all the way from Rising Star to be here today, and he's super excited to read our book. Can you say hi? Hi. And then we also have a new friend. This is Saki the Sock, and Saki the Sock is a little shy. He's a little nervous, but he's going to read with us today too, and he'll be great. Right, Saki? Right. All right, let's get started. So today, we're going to read this book. And this book is called Gregory the Terrible Eater. Terrible means very bad. Now, this book is by Mitchell Charmont, and it's illustrated by Jose Aruego. Remember, illustrated means drew the picture. You got it. And Ariane Dewey. On the cover here, I see Gregory the goat. This animal is a goat. And just in case you didn't know, goats eat garbage, junk. They eat everything. But in this picture, on the cover, I'm noticing Gregory is thinking about some foods that aren't junk. So I want you to look here with me. And I want you to take a moment to think. What do you think might happen in this story? we're going to make a prediction. When we make our prediction, we will say, I predict. Let's try that together. I predict. Perfect. All right. I need you all to get out your phones, and you're going to give me a call and tell me, what do you predict? Ready? OK, think. All right, give me a call when you're ready. All right, I'm going to hang up my phone. Wow, readers, I heard so many excellent predictions. One of my kindergarten friends told me they think this book is going to be about Gregory the goat who gets in trouble for not eating anything. What an excellent prediction. Go like this if you agree with that kindergartner. I also heard a first grader call in with an excellent prediction. He said, I think that Gregory wants to eat vegetables. <gasps> go like this if you agree. All right, readers, let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to read to find out what happens in this story. Remember, it's called Gregory the Terrible Eater. Gregory the Terrible Eater. This book is for Andrew and the goat who tried to eat his coat. Remember, goats eat everything. Once there was a goat named Gregory. Gregory liked to jump from rock to rock, kick his legs into the air, and butt his head against walls. I'm an average goat, said Gregory. Average means normal. I'm an average goat, said Gregory. But Gregory was not an average goat. Gregory was a terrible eater. Every time he sat down to eat with his mother and his father, he knew he was in for trouble. Show me a connection if this ever happens to you at home. 
Maybe you have something to eat that you do not want to eat. That's what's happening to Gregory. Would you like a tin can, Gregory? Asked Mother Goat. Uh, no thanks, said Gregory. How about a nice box, a piece of rug, and a bottle cap? Asked Father Goat. Bah, said Gregory unhappily. Well, I think this is a meal fit for a goat, said Mother Goat as she chewed on an old shoe. It certainly is, said Father Goat as he ate a shirt, buttons and all. I don't know why you're such a fussy eater, Gregory. Fussy means picky. I don't know why you're such a fussy eater, Gregory. I'm not fussy, said Gregory. I just want fruits, vegetables, eggs, fish, bread, and butter. Good stuff like that. Ooh, I'm seeing some readers thinking those are healthy foods. Yes, they are. Mother Goat stopped eating the shoe. Now what kind of food is that, Gregory, she said. It's what I like, said Gregory. It's revolting, said Father Goat. Revolting means disgusting. It's revolting, said Father Goat. He wiped his mouth with his napkin. Ooh, I'm noticing in this picture, Gregory is thinking about all of the healthy foods he wishes he could eat. I'm also noticing that Father Goat and Mother Goat don't look very happy. I can tell that because their faces are frowning. After Gregory was excused from the table, Father Goat said, Gregory is such a terrible eater. I wonder what's wrong with him, said Mother Goat. Mother and Father Goat ate their evening newspaper in silence. All right, we're gonna stop here, readers, because Gregory has a problem. What problem does Gregory have? Let's think about that for a moment. What problem does Gregory have? You can show me your thinking by going like this. All right, readers, when you're ready, you're gonna turn and talk to your partner, and remember, you can always call me, and you're gonna say, what problem does Gregory have? You can say, the problem is, let's try that together. The problem is, perfect, you got it. All right, ready, turn and talk. Oh my gosh, readers, welcome back. I just heard from my friend, Tiggy the Tiger. Tiggy the Tiger told me that he thinks the problem in this story so far is that Gregory doesn't have any food that he actually wants to eat. Go like this if you agree with Tiggy. I agree also. I was telling Tiggy that I thought his parents were a little upset or angry. I also got a call from a reader, and that reader told me that they thought that Gregory's problem was that nobody understood him. Wow, go like this if you agree. Maybe his parents just don't understand him. Gregory is thinking about all these healthy foods that he wishes he could be eating. Let's keep reading to find out what will happen. The next morning, mother and father goat were enjoying a pair of pants and a coat for breakfast. Gregory came to the table. Good morning, Gregory, said father and mother goat. Good morning, said Gregory. May I have some orange juice, cereal, and bananas for breakfast, please? Oh no, mother goat said, do have some of this nice coat. Take a bite out of these pants, said father goat. Bah, said Gregory and he left the table. Try that with me. <laughs> oh, you all sound like a bunch of goats. Father Goat threw down his napkin. That does it, he said. Gregory just isn't eating right. We must take him to the doctor. Father and Mother Goat took Gregory to the doctor. Dr. Ram was munching on a few pieces of cardboard. Munching, I bet I have some first graders out there who remember that word. That means chewing. Everybody practice munching with me. You got it. Dr. Ram was munching on a few pieces of cardboard. What seems to be the trouble, he said. 
Gregory is a terrible eater, said Mother Goat. We've offered him the best. Shoes, boxes, magazines, tin cans, coats, pants. But all he wants are fruits, vegetables, eggs, fish, orange juice, and other horrible things. <gasps> what do you have to say about all of this, Gregory? asked Dr. Ram. I want what I like, said Gregory. I can see here that Gregory is thinking about a banana. Makes sense, said Dr. Ram. He turned to mother and father goat. I've treated picky eaters before, he said. They have to develop a taste for good food slowly. Try giving Gregory one new food each day until he eats everything. All right. Give me a thumbs up if you think this plan is gonna work. Do you think Gregory will start to eat everything? You can give me a thumbs down if you think, no way, he will not. All right, show me. Wow, I saw lots of people saying, yeah, they think it will work, but I saw even more saying, no way, Gregory will not eat everything. Great predictions. Let's find out. That night for dinner, Mother Goat gave Gregory spaghetti and a shoelace in tomato sauce. Not too bad, said Gregory. The next day, she gave him string beans and a rubber heel cut into small pieces. The meal was good and rubbery, said Gregory. Oh, I see some more readers putting thumbs up. It's starting to work. He's eating more things. The day after that, Mother Goat said, we have your favorite today, vegetable soup. But there is one condition, you also have to eat the can. Okay, said Gregory, what's for dessert? Ice cream, said Father Goat, but you have to eat the box too. Yummy, said Gregory, it's working. I'm proud of you, said Father Goat, you're beginning to eat like a goat. I'm learning to like everything, said Gregory. Wow, show me on your face right now. How is Gregory feeling? Tiggy showing us too. A big smile, Gregory's feeling good. All right, we're gonna pause here. What has happened so far in our story? Remember that good readers always like to stop and retell what's going on in their story so they can make sure it makes sense. So think for a moment. What happened at the beginning of our story? What happened in the middle and what's happening now? We're not quite to the end yet. When you turn and talk to your partner, you're gonna say, so far, let's try that together. So far, all right, ready, go ahead and think and then turn and talk. What has happened so far? All right, readers, welcome back. Remember Saki the Sock is kind of shy, so Let's give Saki the Sock a little encouragement. You can say, good job, Saki, you can do it. Here's Saki. Saki told me that he thinks that what's happened so far is that first, Gregory didn't like anything his parents liked. Is that right? Yeah. But then, slowly, after he saw Dr. Ram, Gregory started to eat more and more things. Is that right? All right, give me a sign if you agree with Saki. Bye Saki, see you later. You can go like this if you agree. I heard a lot of friends phone in and tell me something similar. Great retelling. Let's keep going. One evening, Father Goat asked, has anyone seen my striped necktie? Not since breakfast, Mother Goat said. Come to think of it, I haven't seen my sewing basket today. I left it in the living room after supper last night. Supper means dinner. I left it in the living room after supper last night. Father Goat turned to Gregory. Gregory, have you been eating between meals? Yes, said Gregory. I can't help it. Now I like everything. Well, said Mother Goat, it's all, eat, all right to eat like a goat but you shouldn't eat like a pig. Oh, said Gregory. Pigs eat everything all the time. So Mother Goat said, it's all right to eat like a goat, but you shouldn't eat like a pig. 
After Gregory went to bed, Mother Goat said, I'm afraid Gregory will eat my clothes hamper. A hamper is like a basket where people sometimes keep dirty clothes. So after Gregory went to bed, Mother Goat said, I'm afraid Gregory will eat my clothes hamper. Yes, and then my toolkit will be next, said Father Goat. He's eating too much. We'll have to do something about it. Wow, I am seeing Gregory munching or chewing on many things. The next evening, just before supper, Mother and Father Goat went to the town dump. A town dump is a place where there's lots of garbage or junk. You can see some here in this picture. The next evening, just before supper, Mother and Father Goat went to the town dump. Hmm. They brought home eight flat tires. Let's count and make sure there are eight. Help me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's eight. Eight flat tires, a three-foot piece of barber pole, a broken violin, and half a car. They piled everything in front of Gregory's sandbox. When Gregory came home for supper, he said, what's all that stuff in the yard? Your supper, said Father Goat. It all looks good, said Gregory. Gregory ate the tires and the violin. Then he slowly ate the barber pole. But when he started in on the car, he said, I've got a stomach ache. I have to lie down. Show me what it looks like when you have a stomach ache. Yeah, I have to lie down. Gregory went to his room. I think Gregory ate too much junk, said Father Goat. Let's hope so, said Mother Goat. All night, Gregory tossed and twisted and moaned and groaned. I can tell from this picture that Gregory's thinking about all that junk that he ate, like those tires and the violin and the barber pole and the car. The next morning, he went down for breakfast. What would you like for breakfast today, Gregory? asked Father Goat. Scrambled eggs and two pieces of wax paper and a glass of orange juice, said Gregory. That sounds just about right, said Mother Goat. And it was. And that's the end of our story, Gregory the Terrible Eater. Wow. So in this story, Gregory had some problems, right? I heard a lot of friends tell me, and my turn and talk partners told me, that Gregory didn't like the food his parents gave him. Even after he went to the doctor, he still didn't like it at first, but then he started to eat more and more. Uh-oh, then his tummy was hurting. So we're gonna discuss our story a little bit. We know our problem, but now we're gonna think about how did Gregory's problem get solved? What happened in our story that helped Gregory's problem get fixed or solved? Because remember, after we read, good readers always discuss or think about what they read. So I'm gonna give you a moment to think, how did Gregory's problem get solved? And when you're ready, you're gonna turn and talk to your partner, or you can even give me a call. All right, ready? You can say Gregory's problem was solved when? Turn and talk. Okay, welcome back readers. Great job turning and talking. I still have my phone on because I heard lots of readers call in to tell me what they thought. Great work. Almost every reader who called in told me, I'm gonna hang up now, that Gregory's problem got solved when he got a bad stomach ache from all that junk he ate and it made him realize he shouldn't eat so much junk. At the end, one reader even told me they used the words to help them know how the problem was, was solved because Gregory said, scrambled eggs and two pieces of wax paper and a glass of orange juice. So by the end of the story, Gregory wanted a little bit of junk and some healthy food. And then Mother Goat said, that sounds just about right. 
Another reader told me the problem was solved when Gregory and his parents were happy and eating together. Great job sharing how this problem got solved, readers. I agree. All right. So I have one more question for you. Gregory's parents said that he was being fussy or picky. In our story, we can even look back. They said, why are you such a fussy eater, Gregory? And I'm wondering what you all think. Do you agree that Gregory is a fussy or picky eater? I'm noticing here he's thinking about all these healthy foods. So I want you to think, do you agree? Is Gregory a fussy eater? And then why? Why do you think that? Remember, you can use words or pictures to help you explain your thinking. So let me ask you the question again. Do you think that Gregory is a fussy or picky eater? Why or why not? You're gonna go ahead, turn and talk to your partner. You can say, I think, and make sure you say because, so you tell your partner why. All right, ready? Think, and you can turn and talk now. All right, welcome back, readers. Today, for this question, Tiggy the Tiger's back. He was telling me that he thinks Gregory is a fussy eater because Gregory only wanted what he wanted. <gasps> Go like this if you agree with the tiger. Gregory is a fussy eater. Okay, now remember, just like in class, it's okay if you disagree. And even though he's shy, Saki the Sock said that he disagreed. Right, Saki? Saki said that he thought Gregory was not being fussy or picky because he was being polite. He said please, and he asked for food that he knew he would eat so he wouldn't be wasteful. <gasps> Go like this if you agree with Saki. Wow, I heard lots of great explanations for why. Good job thinking about our story, kindergartners and first graders. All right, readers, I'm gonna put our book down for a little bit because now, guess what? It's your turn. You're gonna be reading on your own today. And while you're doing your reading on your own or independently, we have a couple of things to think about before we get started. I want you to remember that when you are doing your independent reading, you need to choose a just right book. That means a book that's not too hard or too easy. One thing that will help you is if you remember our thinking about my reading chart. You can even point to your brain. That helps me remember. Thinking about my reading. The first thing that we good readers always do when we're reading is think, what is happening in my book? Hmm, you all just did that with me in Gregory the Terrible Eater. You told me what was happening in the beginning, middle, and end. The next thing we think about is, can I read most of the words? A just right book, you'll be able to read most of the words the first time. Finally, we think, do I understand what I am reading? It's so important, not just reading the words, but really understand what we're reading. So I want you to keep these things in mind as you're getting ready to do your independent reading. So before I send you off, I wanna show you what I mean. I'm gonna set Taigi and Saki down here for a little bit, because they're turn and talk partners, they can have a break right now. So for my independent reading today, I'm just gonna share a little bit of one of my other favorite stories called Lola Plants a Garden. And I'm gonna show you what good readers do, what all of you already do, while we're reading today. This story is Lola Plants a Garden, and it's by Anna McQuinn, and it's illustrated by Rosalind Beardshaw. Remember that illustrated means, what's that? You got it, drew the pictures, and written means wrote the words. Good readers always look at the cover first, just like we did with Gregory the Terrible Eater. They make predictions. I'm making a prediction right now that this person on the cover is Lola, and that Lola will plant a garden outside in the grass. You can go like this if you agree with me. 
All right, good readers next. They start at the beginning of the book and they look to make a couple other predictions. I'm not gonna read yet, I'm just thinking. Hmm, ooh, I'm seeing on this page Lola is reading with somebody who I think might be her mom. Ooh, here I'm noticing Lola has lots of books. Maybe she went to the library. Let's look at one more page. Ooh, it looks like Lola's buying something. I predict Lola is buying plants or seeds. All right, let's read the first part of our book. And remember, we're gonna stop and think, what's happening? And can I read most of the words? And do I understand what I'm reading? Lola plants a garden. Lola plants a garden. Lola loves her book of garden poems. Her favorite poem is the one about Mary Mary. Hmm, I read all of those words correctly, so this is a good book for me. And I'm understanding what I'm reading. I know that Lola is reading a book about gardens. Lola wants to plant a garden. Mommy says there is room near the vegetables. In my mind, I can picture vegetables, like peas and carrots. Lola gets books about gardens from the library. I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back because my prediction was correct. She went to the library. She chooses her favorite flowers from the books. Mommy makes a list. I'm gonna stop here and think, what's happened so far in our book? So Lola was reading about books, uh, reading a book about gardens with mommy, and mommy told her there was room to plant near the vegetables. I could picture those vegetables in my mind. She then went to the library, and now mommy's making a list of her favorite flowers from the book. All right, readers, I'm gonna stop here for today because I wanna make sure that you have time to get reading. So. Remember, good readers are always thinking about their reading. They're starting to even make pictures in our mind, which we're gonna talk about more when we're together next time. I am so proud of your hard work today. Give me an air high five because you did it. All right, readers. So remember, you're gonna go find a just right book and read on your own. I'm Miss Brant and I will see you next time for more Making Meaning. And remember, if you don't have a Just Right book at home, it's okay. You can look on the Seattle Public Schools student portal, and we'll even leave this page up so that your parents can see where they can go for more resources for independent reading books. See you next time.